What's up guys, welcome back to Nintendo Land, and today I have 14 really interesting facts about Tears of the Kingdom that you probably didn't know, whether it be small details or cool easter eggs within the overworld. I've also thrown in some funny videos and funny moments that I've seen online, so if you have any of your own funny videos that you want to share with me, send them via Nintendo Land on Twitter, and also comment down below if you found any cool easter eggs or secrets within the game so far, and you could be featured in the next video. If you enjoyed this video and want to see it grow into a series, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and Nintendo in general. Now, let's get into the video. Starting the list, did you know that if you hit the steward constructs that they'll actually go into a immobilized form and shrink down into a small statue? You can talk to them in order to make them come back out of the statue or wait a while and they'll pop their heads back out. Yep, it's kind of a defensive measure. You can fuse pretty much everything in this game, and that even includes a minecart. You can put a minecart to your shield and actually ride it like a skateboard. You can grind on rails with it also, and also use it to switch rails, but you can also go down very long hills for a very long time even if it's not rainy, and also flat surfaces and ride it pretty much just like a skateboard. In the album section of your Pura pad, you'll notice that there's already three images within the slate. And those three images were actually taken by Zelda at the very beginning of the game, and you'll actually see the flashes and moments she takes these pictures. They're actually accurate to exactly when she took them, which is pretty cool. When you're talking to an NPC, there's actually a new log function tied to the Y button, where if you're talking to them for a very long time and maybe forgot something they said, you can pull up the log and actually go all the way back and look at things they said in the past and even choices you made in the dialogue, which is really interesting, especially if there's a big mission where you forgot where you're supposed to go, because sometimes NPCs like to drag on, you can now look back to what they said exactly and follow their instructions step by step. There is now a new animation when Link gets on a ladder. When he gets to the top, he'll actually prop himself up onto the ledge, and when he gets down, he'll actually jump into the ladder in a new animation instead of just sticking to the ladder in a weird way. Link now hums certain tunes throughout the Zelda series as he cooks, and here's a couple for you right here. <laughs> And thanks to Gamer's Little Playground on YouTube, he actually isolated the humming and removed some of the sound effects for us to hear it better and compared it with the original songs. So here's the whole thing, and also check out his channel. <laughs> A super on Twitter noticed that the fan sound effect in Tears of the Kingdom actually sounds almost identical to the spin dash sound effect from Sonic Adventure. Yeah, I know that's a weird and bizarre thing to compare, but seriously, just listen to both of these sound effects and tell me they're not the same. Maybe there was some type of inspiration, or maybe Alnuma liked Sonic Adventure or something, but it's definitely the same sound effect. Now the Temple of Time in the Sky Islands chimes twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening, and it's always at 7 o'clock, 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Now of course I just started the game, so there's still more story to be told, and of course maybe there's a reason for this, but the number 7 seems to be very prominent, especially in this game and including past games. There were 7 sages in Ocarina of Time, and we know that there's 7 tiers, I believe, in this game, so maybe that's why the number 7 is so spectacular, but yeah, you can here it chime twice at both of these times, 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Real quick guys, if you are enjoying the video so far, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Tears of the Kingdom. It helps a lot. Thanks guys, back to the video. Returning from Breath of the Wild, lots of the characters and NPCs within the game are based off of me designs, and you can also mod the game very similar to Breath of the Wild in order to put in your own Miis as NPCs within Tears of the Kingdom, which is pretty cool. It's a weird thing and a weird way for how they make characters, but it actually is an incredible tool and it works really well. 
If you fuse a mushroom to your weapon, as you hit an enemy, the very last attack will actually launch them far off into the background. Now, it won't do a whole lot of damage, but the knockback is quite insane. If you need to get an enemy away from you, this is the perfect way to do so. It just brings them across the map, which is just hilarious to watch them flail and fly over into the water or something. <laughs> Areas with tons of apple trees sometimes hide something special, a golden apple. And from far away, it'll kind of just look like a golden acorn, but if you jump up and grab it, you'll see it's a golden apple, and it gives you more hearts. It actually gives you a heart and a half just eating regularly without even cooking it, so maybe you can cook it into something special. But yeah, I do wonder if they have any type of special fuse effect or something else you can do with them besides eating them. And I wonder if they can make your whole food a golden stew or something, some type of golden dish that you could craft. If you you go just north of Lookout Landing, you'll come into the old ruins of Castle Town, and you'll notice that Zelda actually placed a memorial here now for the fallen soldiers, I guess, from the first game. And it reads, I dedicate this monument to the memory of the souls lost to the calamity, which might be a reference to the pose and the underground depths that you can take to the statues, which are the lost souls from the people that died of Hyrule. Which I would have kind of expected this monument to be a little bit bigger, especially considering it's supposed to represent all of the lost ones in Hyrule. So yeah, at least she put her favorite flower, the Silent Princess, on top. There are tons of posters of Link and Zelda throughout Hyrule, but you can find one easily in Lookout Landing. If you go to Pura's room, you can go through the door all the way upstairs to her sleeping quarters, and you'll see on the wall the poster of Link and Zelda, where you can see kind of a script of their names, which is hard to make out, but you can see Zelda also has some type of middle name thrown in there, which could very well be Zelda Hyrule Bosphoramus, but Link also has a last name as well, and it's extremely long. Obviously, we can't make out what it says, but we know that Link officially has a last name of some sorts. And Tears of the Kingdom has added a new sound effect for when it rains and it hits your glider. You can actually hear the pitter patter of the rain hitting the glider in this game, which is a really cool, nice effect they've added. That is 14 things that you probably missed and details about the game already in the early first couple of hours that I've played. Of course, if you guys have found any cool details, make sure you comment them down below in order to be featured in the next video. And I'll also do a separate series based on funny moments and things that I can find from you guys online. So if you have any funny moments or clips you would like to share, do so via Nintendo Land on Twitter or also Nintendo Land on TikTok, as I will be pulling videos from there as well. Thank you so much for tuning in, and like always, I'll see you all on the next one. See you guys.